thank you very much for joining us on Testify. My name is Sharon Naitore Wangenye, and as always, our faith on Testify gets to grow some more. Today we hear the story of Richard, who's a missionary with the Hillsong Church in South Africa. He was raised by an absentee father. He got into drugs at the age of 14 and was addicted for 12 good years. He got into serious depression, tried to severely take away his life, but somehow the Lord kept him to this day. Let's hear his testimony. My name is Richard Dalton. Um, I'm from South Africa, originally born in Joburg, Johannesburg. And um, my upgrowing was, was, my upgrowing was uh, not the, the best of best, like, <laughs> like you know, um, I don't think there's, there's a manual that comes with parenthood. So you can't like, it's nothing that, oh, I can just read this book and I'll be a great parent, like it comes with lessons. So I don't blame anything that happened to my, uh, happened in my life to my parents or anything at all like that. So, um, you know, I grew up with a very emotional type of um, abuse uh, upgrading. Like there were certain things that happened in my life that, that really knocked me down and hurt me a lot. Um, and I remember this guy, starting at the age of seven um, till about 14 where I just you know just kept quiet about it um, I said nothing about it I just focused on myself and tried to 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 stay to stay strong my father was never pretty much home he was uh, traveling traveling all of Africa the whole time like he was up in Africa Congo um, Zambia Botswana Zimbabwe so he was not present at home a lot and um, you know the at the age of 14, uh, I remember it like yesterday, it was like right before we went out for my birthday celebration with friends. Um, you know, something happened and at home and didn't really, um, like something happened at home and, um, you know, I left with a very broken heart to, 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 go, to, to go to my friends um, and spend time with them and I remember one of my friends saying you know if your family um, hurt you so much and you know close friends and, and so on has hurt you so much maybe you should you should try and um, use cocaine because it's going to take away that feeling and you won't be able to feel anything and you will feel nothing for nobody and it will fix you up <laughs> and um, yeah I'm not going to sit here and lie and say it didn't because <laughs> it did but it only did for that one night and um, this, 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 this was the start of, of, a, of addiction, a heroin addiction that, took, that, that carried on for 12 years. Um, you know, at the age of 14, I was injecting heroin. Like three, two to three weeks after I started cocaine, I was injecting heroin. And uh, from the first go, I was addicted. And, um, you know, was throughout that 12 years, there's a lot of things that happened in my life that, um, I'm not very proud of, but one thing that 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 did happen was, you know, he's promised me that, hey, you're gonna be set free from it. <laughs> you're gonna have no feeling towards nothing or nobody, and you're gonna be happy. But I was so unhappy. I was so unhappy, but I didn't feel anything for anybody. And I just, like, I didn't know better. Um, so it was just like, <laughs> It was like it was like a norm to me because I, I I grew up with okay this is this is what it's what's going on in life and this is how people should be treated and that was a norm to me but that hurt me so you know I I intended to I, I moved I turned to heroin to suppress that feeling and that's the best way of dealing and coping with life that I knew and um, it it carried on. And so many times, there was a lot of times throughout this 12 years that I tried to stop, you know. I've got three beautiful kids, Jonathan, he's um, eight. Uh, the twins are six, they're five, they're turning six. And um, Courtney and Connor. So, you know, there's been the times in my life where, where I've really tried, okay, I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> I'm gonna do it the right way now. But that's me in my own flesh speaking. Uh, you know, I grew up in a house that yeah, my, my cousin and um, her mom and them were very uh, Christian-like and, and, you know, they had good values at church and, and, and their home. Her wife with me, it was a bit different. Um, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, we didn't grow up with heavily good church and my, my parents would just go <laughs> YOLOing. <laughs> and um, 
So, you know, I didn't, I didn't know those values and morals and stuff of, of God and, and, and all that. So I tried to stop so many times in my own flesh. Um, people said, hey, approach church. There was numerous churches I approached and um, yeah, it was just like, there was no connection. Like, you know, it, it wasn't God's timing yet. Um, and uh, I remember, I remember me getting into this this deep depression of, of I really want to stop. I want to be a better father for my kids. My kids don't deserve a father that's not present in their life. But not knowing God that time, <laughs> I felt like this already. And, you know, approaching so many different aspects of life that I really want to stop, I really want to stop. Um, and nothing new worked, like nothing worked. And um, I, 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 I remember me going into this deep, deep depression and the only way I saw out of this was to take my own life because drugs wouldn't leave me. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would try and stop and I, it would be going good for six days. <laughs> and that's all, you know, six days I'll turn into this monster and, you know, just destroy everything. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll cry for it. Like, it literally feels like my body's ripping apart for, for, for heroin. And, um, Nothing used to work, and I eventually turned to um, to one of my dealers, and I said to him, "Hey, like I need a gun, nine mil, because <laughs> in my own strength and my own flesh, I was going, well, if it doesn't want to leave me, I'll leave it." <laughs> and um, you know, it, it it was a very dark stage of my life, and um, that's the only hope that I saw. It's the only light that I saw in my tunnel, and um, I remember putting the nine mil against my head and uh, pulling the trigger. And the, the gun just, I, I don't even know what you call it. People saying it's called jam. People say it's calling clock. Uh, the bullet literally turned around in the barrel. And I remember going back to him and I said to him, hey, I, I know you want to make money, but maybe send this thing back to China. It's not working. It's fake. <laughs> um, and he gave me a 38 special. He said, no, this will definitely work. He put it full of bullets. I, not full, but I think there was four bullets in. And... I literally went home, I got high again, because that's the only way I, I, I felt confident enough to do it. And, you know, I put the gun inside my mouth and I pulled, uh, pointed upwards. And when I pulled the trigger twice, all it did was click, click. Um, when I took it out of my mouth, you know, I pointed to the tree. I'm going, nah, I'm, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on here. Like, I've tried, I'm trying, it's not working. Like, please just let me go. Like, I don't want to be here. Because, uh, like, I was so mixed emotions. Like, I didn't know what's going on. And um, I put it pointed to the tree and I, and, I, and I pulled the trigger twice and, and all it did was go off. And I was like, what's going on here? Like, in my mouth you do click, click, but I pointed upwards and uh, you just go for it. <laughs> um, I remember taking that back to him as well and going, nah, this is not going to work. Um, maybe, maybe you just give me 14 grams of heroin and that should be fine. Breaking from drugs addiction has not been easy for many people, but in his case, it was different. Um, you know, he gave me 14 grams of heroin, which is 57 bags, if, if, if you know how much that is. And, um, you know, I injected everything that night. I passed out. Um, I don't remember what happened in between, but I know, I, I know for one thing for sure, I woke up and I cried for the first, year, first time in 12 years. I cried for the first time in 12 years. I felt emotional. For, for the first time in 12 years, I actually felt loved and touched. And uh, now I know that was God. Back then I was very, very emotional. Not like, you know, I, the first thing is that I did was I, I, got, I got in contact with my family and um, one of them was my aunt, and I said to her, "Hey, like, what? Do, can I? Can I? Can I see you guys? Can I come talk to you?" And um, you know, I remember then telling the, the entire family what's going on. I knew, I knew, because a lot of times uh, they've, 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 they've uh, that it was suspicious. They were suspicious about me. Am I using? And I just denied it for 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 years. And this time around, I, I, I knew because I felt God saying, how many times do you want me to save you? For you to realize that I've got a calling on your life and that I've called you to be better and greater than that. And that's the first moment I felt valued. Uh, first moment I really felt encouraged and uplift, knowing that there's something bigger out there and I need to get 
in relationship with this. And I remember speaking to my family about it and the only thing that, 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 that I felt strongly convicted about was truth and there's no, there's no honeycombing things. Um, you know, if, if I'm going to do this right, I'm going to have to make sure that I'd sacrifice things to it. You know, the first thing they said was, I remember it, uh, that's like imprinted in my head. My aunt goes, you know, that's the Holy Spirit that's, that's trying to knock on your door like he's done so many times in your life. Um, it needs to take a step of obedience of faith to, to step out of that and say, hey, I'm done. I'm done with this life. And, um, you know, telling them everything and, and not leaving everything out, telling them everything. Um, I remember I remember saying, you know, we're family and we stick together. Uh, we're going to pray together. Uh, we're going to stay in agree stand in agreement with you that God is going to step into your life and, and, and he's going he's gonna to do what only he can do. And um, yeah, for from that moment, and that was literally one day before I stopped, I said, okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast and say, okay, God, if, 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 this is, if this is what you want, like reveal yourself to me afresh, like fall afresh on me. Um, I didn't know how to pray back then. <laughs> it was like, just God, take away this pain. You know, every single time I craved, every single time I would draw, every single time I, I felt, and, and, and I must say that that nine days was days that I was under attack. I was under the attack because for so long in my life before God, I, I was living this life of people would speak things like, you're useless, you're pathetic, uh, oh, you shouldn't be living, um, you shouldn't be breathing, you shouldn't be in our lives, um, you know, wish I never knew you, that kind of thing. So people spoke death, death, death over my life and, and ultimately believed it. You know, and when I when I when I gave my life to God, I said, "Oh, you're gonna take this away," and 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 you know, it's it's like those feelings. And now sitting here, I I, I can see that. And, you know, I I really stand in awe of who He is because I'll feel how my organs feel like they're tearing apart, and you know, I'm busy dying, and I I remember those feelings coming back, going but I told you you're useless, but I told you you're not good enough. But my first instinct was not to go back to my old ways. My first instinct was you are a new creation. You are living in who he is. So the first thing I'll do is I'll open my Bible and I'll, and I'll put my earphones in my ear and I'll start listening to worship and I'll submit that to the Lord and I'll say, hey God, I wasn't super spiritual back then, so <laughs> I didn't have super powerful prayers. I was just saying, God, take this away. Reveal yourself to me at first and take this away. That's all I prayed for probably the first six months of my, my journey. And, um, you know, in that moment, that's exactly what he did. That's exactly what he did. And that gave me that revelation of, of, of his word, saying he's good. <laughs> he's good, he's kind. Like, you know, he, he doesn't look at what we've done and, and how much we must suffer for that. You know, he sent Jesus for us to die for that. So, you know, it's, it's one, it, it, it's, I think it comes back to the choice that you make. Um, you know, when, I look at it, Jesus had to make the choice whether he's going to go through with this at the, law, at the final supper. And, you know, he, he could have pulled out. He could have pulled out. And how would we have lived? <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I relate to my own story and I go, I could have backed in and said, no, I'm done. You know, and I just didn't. I just said, no, if, if, if God is going to reveal himself to me, he needs to do it himself. Because I want him to open open that door that no man can shut. I want him to reveal himself to me so that I get that revelation of who he is so that nobody can take me away, take it away from me. Because ultimately the only thing that will change me would be him, not myself. Because of my, because of my own flesh, believe you me, I've tried everything, nothing worked. <laughs> and um, since the day I broke fast, nine days into it, I'm like, he says it's... And I remember people saying to me, Richard, you're crazy. You don't use heroin for 12 years and just leave it like that. You have to go down on a medical replacement and, and that's going to take away the cravings and that's going to take away everything. You know, I just said like, if God is big, if God is great, and if he's bigger than us and he moves in the unseen, then I'll do my best in the scene and I'll see you move in the unseen. So I left heroin completely without any medical replacement or substitute of it. I didn't go to hospital, I didn't detox. I left at cold turkey. And I remember me laying in bed at night, um, couldn't sleep. 
uh, feel like I was dying. And, and the only thing I did was I prayed. I, I changed my entire, um, my entire circle of things. I moved away from friends. That was bad because I can't help them if I can't even help myself. Um, I can't be around um, that kind of influence world because I'll just end up relapsing. I need to focus now on me and my journey with the Lord. I'm going to do this right way. And you know, I changed my music from circling music to, to, to worship. Um, I've changed my um, what I follow, what I see on, on social media to, to only godly things. I've changed. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't really watching TV at that stage. Um, I moved away from, from my house and I moved into my uh, grand's house. And, um, you know, I've, that, that was nine days of me going through pain and fasting. And, you know, it's nine days of me going through withdrawals. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes these things can go up to 30 days two months, three months, but mine was nine days, praise the Lord. You know, throughout me, me stopping and uh, turning to him, uh, you know, he, he said I need to leave corporate world. And uh, I, was, I was okay to work. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Lord, well, I'm so blessed and overwhelmed by you. I can, um, I can be a kingdom builder. I can build your church now, you know. I can survive on the minimum because you've saved my life. And, uh, you know, so into your church. And I remember him saying, that's not what I called you to do. I called you to ministry, full-time ministry, so you need to submit to me and authority and learn. And uh, I remember him planting in my head, well, speaking to me directly, that um, you need to leave corporate and go. You must do the internship. Because what I did is I left corporate, I left my friends, and I focused on my grand. You know, I focused on getting better and, and getting stuck into the word. Um, no, back then there was no church for me. There was no Hillsong. You know, I, I stopped nine days, and um, you know I started craving and withdrawing within the nine days. And you know, f since the moment God took that away, there was a couple of days after that that I still had to journey on my own. And then I called my cousin. I said, "Do I'm going go off my head? Like I don't know. I'm going to go crazy. I can't be home all the time." And I remember him saying to me, "You know, Post Lucinda always preaches." And, you know, there's certain sermons where, where she's got this thought of where, if you're comfortable, you're not growing in God. You should never be comfortable. You should always stretch yourself to be uncomfortable. Because when you're uncomfortable, God is going to mold you. When you're uncomfortable, God is going to take you places. When you're uncomfortable, God is going to work with you. But when you're comfortable, you stand still. And that's not where God wants you. God always wants you to move forward. God wants us to leave our comfort zones so that he can be able to mold us. We take a short break, but we will be back.